Welcome to part 9 of Ocarina of Time, and we are now going to ascend Death Mountain. And, um, yeah. Of course, you don't have to put on the Hylian shield right now because, um, well, we're just going up the trail, and essentially, the area we that we will actually need the uh, Hylian shield, it... It basically won't uh, matter until until later on. Anyway, folks, these enemies here are Tektites. Tektites have been around since the very first uh, Zelda game. And like in the very first Zelda game, they will hop around trying to damage you. And damage you they will because, as you can see, one bump from these guys actually takes away half my heart. And the witch sucks. And of course, um, you can act, you can actually try to attack these guys, or you can avoid them, regardless. But either way, they will um, try and bump into you, and um, yeah, they will follow you. So I was like, screw this. Anyway, what's this thing, folks? Meet the Gorons. Yeah, the Gorons here are a race of rock eaters. And, um, yeah, this is the first Zelda game that features these guys. And, um, yeah, pretty much they're rock eaters. They roll around in the in a ball and roll in a certain direction. They have rocks on their backs. And they're pretty much gentle giants. They're pretty much a friendly bunch. They're a proud warrior race kind of thing. And uh, yeah, yeah, they live here on Death Mountain, which means they can withstand extreme heat. They are very powerful, so whatnot. So yeah, let's take this Goron's advice and head up towards a uh, Goron City to see more of them. Now, of course, when you're not talking to them, they will curl up in a ball to do whatever. Of course, this one's telling us about a beautiful fairy that lives on top of Death Mountain. Make note of that. Now, folks, the programmers did a pretty much a crappy mood move right here. As you go down towards Goron City, you'll see here that there is this Goron right here that rolls, and if he bumps into you, he'll actually damage you and knock and can knock you off the trail back to the bottom. And bat, that's a real bad move. That's a crappy move, N Nintendo. Crappy. Anyway, if you can just stand over to the side and let them roll down. Um, well, let's go ahead and enter Goron City. Yeah, welcome to Goron City. And, of course, the Gorons have a problem. Pretty much that you see that cave that that big boulder that's blocking a cave entrance where we meet where we meet the first where we met the first Goron. Well, it turns out that the cave leads to the Goron's uh, food supply, and uh, pretty much they're on a um, they're pretty much uh, starving. I mean, they can't just have any rocks. They got greedy and want the rocks that are inside that cave that's currently blocked. And, oh, and to top things off, there are enemies inside the cave, so, um, yeah, it's a pretty much a clue as to where our next dungeon's going to be. And yes, that's a giant Goron, Gor Goron rolling about on one of the levels. Now, if you go across this rope right here to this, uh, shrine in the middle, now that's actually where the, um, second spiritual stone the Goron's ruby will be would have been located if because um but thanks to the food shortage um one of the Gorons like this guy right here wanted to actually take a you know take a little lick at it because they're starving but thankfully a guy known as Big Brother managed to take the stone and locked himself in this room and will only wait for the um Royal Messenger of Hyrule, which just so happens to be Link. Hooray. So, yeah, yeah, he's pretty much explaining what I pretty much just said, so, yeah. 
And Big Brother, as uh, he is called, is at the very bottom of uh, this city. This nice little subterranean city. And with a giant base. And this door right here, that's Big Brother's um, quarters. Huh. Fascinating. And of course, to um, pretty much confirm our status as the Royal Messenger, play Zelda's Lullaby. Alright, let's go meet this big brother, alright? Folks, meet Darunia. Darunia here is big brother. The leader of the Gorons. The chief, as it were. Pretty much he's the guy in charge. And of course, he was expecting um, the messenger not to be like... He pretty much expected anyone but Link because Link is a kid. And he said... Because it, pre it pretty much insults him that they would send a kid to pretty much get the ruby and all that. So, yeah. So he's pretty much um, explaining, Oh, our cavern is sealed. We are starving. The bomb crops are everywhere. We don't need help from you. And pretty much in a nutshell, he's in a very bad mood. There's only some way we can put him back in a good mu mood. Well, there is actually. Remember that feel-good music, um, something called Serious Song? Well, we're gonna play that for him, and hopefully he'll snap out of this funk. And what follows is a pretty much a weird or hilarious scene, depending on how you look at it. Oh, uh, that... <laughs> yeah, Link did the right move and uh, took a few steps back because uh, you don't want to get trampled by this guy. Anyway, thanks to Saria's song, it puts uh, Darunia back in a good mood. And, um, well, uh, he'll pretty much uh, talk to you in a more civilized manner. And, of course, uh, now this is, this is funny. I've been playing this game for who knows how long. And this is, I believe, the first time where... Darunia is not in the picture when he's talking to me about that whole situation. So, um, yeah, it's just showing Link there. Anyway, pretty much the story is the D D their um, base, Dodongo's K Cavern, has been sealed, pre pretty much cutting off their food supply. And Darunia is like, I'm not going to just give you the spiritual stone. You're going to have to earn it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, he's also given us the Goron's Bracelet. The Goron's Bracelet will allow us to actually pick up bomb flowers. Yeah, flowers that are, have bombs in the center and just like bo regular bombs, explode after a certain time. So, yeah. And now that uh, what you want to do now is take a Deku stick, light, light it with one of the torches, and you want to go around Goron City and make sure you light every unlit torch that you find. By doing so, this giant vase will start spinning. Now why did I make a giant vase spin? Eh, you understand. Anyway, you blow up one of the uh, bomb flowers around here. And this reveals an entrance to a shop in Goron City. So yeah, it's pretty much, Darnia says, if you can stop the monsters in Dodongo's cavern, you can get, have the spiritual stone. And folks, would you... I mean, we have to work for it. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a game if we pretty much just said, oh, you want the spiritual stone? Oh, here you go! Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, folks, um, this passageway right here 
If you listen to the music, that serious song. And folks, by destroying these boulders right here, it will create a shortcut that will lead us back to the Lost Woods. And it's pretty, you know that stone structure that we encountered in the Lost Woods area? Yep, that will lead us straight to Goron City, which means we can, when we restart a game at Kokiri Forest in Link's house, you just go into the Lost Woods, head through the stone structure, and bam! You are straight to, you are in Goron City like in no time flat. And that's great. I love sh shortcuts. Alright. What I'm doing right now is I'm picking bomb flowers and I am tossing them inside the giant vase. Basically the goal is you want to get the bomb inside the vase and when it explodes inside the vase, the vase will turn randomly like, you know, kind of like how, like a spinning wheel. And then the, you have to get the vase to pretty much stop at a certain face. When the vase stops at a certain face, you will get rewarded based on um, what what kind of face it shows. And what you want is ah, oh, Navi, shut up! Blah 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 blah. Dodongo's cavern, I know. But right now, I want to play with a vase. I want to throw bombs inside a vase. Okay. So essentially, you got time it just right. I mean. I mean, the bomb can actually go off while you're holding it, of course, so you want to be careful. I mean, it may take a while, folks, so you gotta have some patience, but trust me, you're gonna like what's gonna come out when you uh, get the vase in the correct position. Alright, here we go! And when the bomb explodes inside the vase, and it'll slow down. And if you get this happy face right there, that means a heart piece will spew out of the vase. Oh, thank goodness. And I was lucky to get that on my first try. I was lucky. All right. All right. Of course, why is there a giant, um, oh, um, Goron rolling about. Well, let's just say that later on, after we beat uh, Dodongo's Cavern, we will be getting an item, and um, let's just say he'll be essential to us um, improving said item, or at least making us possible to carry more of said item. So, yeah. Now I was thinking before I head on to Dodongo's Cavern, I might as well um, use the other empty bottle I have because at this point I have two and I decided to go on and fill it with some uh, red potion. So in Goron's shop, we see that there are bombs and we have red potion and it can restore a whole bunch of our hearts. So yeah. Anyway. As you can see here, this shop sells hearts, bombs, and a red tunic. Now, of course, um, this red tunic here is um, actually going to be important later on, but at this moment, it doesn't concern us. So, yeah, as you can see here, there are bombs in the shop. However, we do not have the right we don't have anything to hold we don't have anything that can hold bombs at the moment I mean the only bombs we can use are bomb flowers and yeah so the Dongo's cavern is sealed at the moment with this giant boulder and we have to go unseal it in order to stop the monsters that are pretty much making the Goron star now here's my little complaint I mean if these Gorons are big and strong, I mean, can they just open the entrance and go in and attack the monsters? I mean, they're heat resistant and whatnot, so, yeah. Oh yeah, so this Goron's uh, pretty much shading the bomb flower here, and um, they pretty much um, mining plants as, that grow only on the mountain, and... Um,
Well, of course, I can pick them up since I now have a Goron bracelet, which can allow me to pick those guys up. So, yeah, essentially these guys here, the bonfires are pretty much uh, grown underground. They hate sunlight because, again, sunlight, for some reason, triggers the bonfire and it explodes and whatnot or something. So, yeah. And get that, the bonfires grow like crazy inside the Dongo's Cavern, which means... This means that we will be seeing a whole bunch of them in this dungeon. So, yeah. Alright, the entrance is open, so let's go. Alright, yeah, so Dodongo's Cavern is our second dungeon of the game. If we beat... If we beat it, we get the second spiritual stone. It's gonna be awesome. And this Goron here, he's the one that rolls down and then stops. Oh, we should have thrown a bomb from the cliff. Oh, that's real smart. Well, give these guys credit. They have rocks on their brains and they are starving and starving makes people act weird and all that. So anyway, folks, we will tackle our second dungeon in part 10. See you then.